Hey guys, welcome back to this recent linen channel. I'm Janelle and today I'm going to show you how to make this heart overshot woven wall hanging. So let's get started. Do you want to learn how to make your own custom color warp double diamond twill woven wall hanging? Join us inside of the tutorial club on Patreon at patreon.com slash spruce and linen link in the description box below. Let's talk about everything you're going to need to do this project. So I have our spruce and linen flat pack frame loom. This is a four ends per inch loom and I have it double warped with 62 total warp strings. And I also have a little piece of cardstock here just for something to beat down onto. And I also am going to be using the warp strings as the fringe for this project. So that's why I've used a bit of a thicker piece. The warp string itself is 8-8 cotton. This 8-8 cotton you can find at spruceandlinen.com and this is the brown or rust color. For the weft, I'm also going to be using the 8-8 cotton and this super chunky or super bulky um, plied wool yarn as well as I think I'm going to put some of this merino wool roving out in the center as well. So we'll play around with that when we get to it, but this is the color antique and is also from our shop. Other tools that I'm gonna be using are a weaving comb, tapestry needles, I have two of them, that's really handy for overshot, as well as some scissors. And of course we have our pattern printout. You can grab this pattern for free at spruceandlinen.com. This tutorial is a little bit more in the intermediate category, I would say, but if you're more of an advanced beginner, you can definitely give this one a go. We do have some other tutorials on Overshot if you are completely new to Overshot and need to kind of learn from the start. Just as a refresher with my patterns, all the colored blocks, so the gray, the light gray and the dark gray, represent going over a warp string. That's how it normally goes. However, since we have done a double warp, it's actually gonna represent going over two warp strings. I really like using a double warp for overshot. What I like to do is in the pattern rows, I treat each block as two warp strings, but then when we go back in with that tabby with our other color, we're going to go with one string is one string. So the tabby will be over one, under one. Tabby is also known as plain weave. Those terms are basically interchangeable. So let's have a look at this pattern. So on the sides here, I have extra blocks and I've just put them in there so that you can follow this exactly if you like. What floating warp strings allow us to do is to not disrupt our pattern and always have something to go over or under on the ends in order to do that. So for this first row, we would be going over two warp strings, then these two white blocks, each again representing two warp strings. So we'd be going under four, over two, under six, over two, and so on. I'm going to show you slowly a few rows of this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and weave the rest of the piece. So to get started, we're gonna do a twining stitch. Now, if you've never done a twining stitch, check out our twining stitch tutorial, and that will give you a really good beginner's look at how to do twining. I'm gonna grab some of this 8-8 cotton, and I like to work with about three arm lengths at a time. I find if you get too long of strings, it just gets a lot more tangled a lot easier, and we don't wanna do that. Now to make our lives a little bit easier in more than, ways than one. So I have two different colors of tapestry needles. I have our walnut and I have our maple. And what I like to do in this scenario when I am using a lighter and a darker color is I, I use the darker color needle for the darker color yarn. It surprisingly makes it just easier to know which color you're grabbing without having to like check if things are laying on top of each other. Just one of those little tricks, I guess. Okay, so to start this, I'm actually not gonna go over one under one. It's just gonna save us some time with a twining stitch and a twining stitch also gets really crowded in this situation if we were to do over one under one. So essentially what I'm doing is a plain weave row first, but I'm going over two, under two, and I'm gonna do that all the way across. Okay, I'm leaving quite a long tail and I'll do a quick refresher on twining. So with twining, basically anywhere the last row went over warp strings, we're gonna go under, down, and through, and I'll show you here. So on this first one, I'm going under the warp strings 
and through like so. We're going to skip these two because the weft string in the previous row is going under. So now here they're going over again. So I'm kind of angling down my needle and I'm coming through like this. So I'm going underneath and back through. And what I like to do as I'm doing my twining stitches, I like to keep on pulling these strings tight just so that things are staying nice and even. So again, I'm skipping these two and I'm going underneath and coming back through where the last row was going over the warp strings. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way across. Now that our twining stitch is in, I'm gonna go ahead and do a plain weave row. So that's gonna be with this particular yarn, over one, under one, all the way across. Now that we have that plain weave row in, we're ready to start with a pattern. So I'm gonna grab some of this light pink yarn. And once again, I'm gonna work with about three arm lengths. This pattern is 16 rows. So I might wanna just see before I go with my three arm lengths, I might wanna just see how much yarn is 16 rows ish so that um, I'm not taking more yarn than I need to. So I'm just gonna measure here. I'm gonna go a little bit extra, 16. Then I'm gonna go a little bit extra. And let's just see, that might be more than three arm lengths. It's just over three arm lengths. So I'm glad I measured because I wouldn't wanna end, um, I wouldn't want the yarn to end when I'm just about done weaving the pattern. So I'm gonna thread this needle here and we're going to get started with this pattern. What I like to do is have an extra piece of paper to cover up the rest of the rows because sometimes your eyes are playing tricks on you and you're very focused in counting and you can get a little lost. So this just kind of helps you stay tr stay on track with where you are. You can also use a pencil to check off each row as you weave them if you like, but in this particular pattern, it's pretty easy to count the rows. So you definitely don't have to do that. Now I'm going to quickly show you how we're gonna do this pattern. So again, covering up all those other rows, we're gonna start just like this and we'll do this together. So once again, each of these blocks represents two warp strings. The colored blocks represent going over two warp strings and the white or paper colored blocks represent going under. So I'm gonna go over two under four, over two, under six, over two, under ten, two, four, six, eight, ten, over two, under six, over two, under ten, over two, under six, over two, under two, over two and that's our first row every row of this pattern is symmetrical so once you're at the halfway point you'll start to be like oh i've done this like over two under ten already before so i'm going to make an arch we're going to gently beat that down and in this pattern and with overshot i don't like to beat everything down really really tightly so keep aware of that. Now we're going to take our warp string again and the last row we ended on going under this warp string so we're, on the next row we're going to go over. So the thing that's great about overshot just as a little bit of an aside is because we're going in between each pattern row with plain weave and we are alternating those plain weave rows so it's almost like in the background there's just a basic plain weave cloth. What it allows us to do is create these pattern rows with our other yarn that go over lots of warp strings and under lots of warp strings, but it doesn't compromise the structure of our weaving. So that's kind of the benefit. It's, it's essentially known as a bound weave where we're binding in the pattern rows to keep our structure. So I'm just gonna go again with the plain weave all the way across. So again, creating that arch, I like to sort of pull it a little bit. You can do the strum and then beat down that plain weave. Again, we're not reaming down on it. We're letting it stay a little bit 
loose. So now we're ready to move on to the second row. So this time we're starting on the under. So we're going under two warp strings, over six, under two, over six, under six, over six, under two, over six, under six, over six, under two, over six, and then under four. And then once again, we can go ahead and do our tabby row. So I'm always taking this tabby row and going under our chunky yarn so that it kind of stays in the background. And again, on the last row, we ended underneath this far warp string. So now we're starting on the over. So over one, under one, all the way across. Now we can move on to the third row. So here we are. We're going over six, under two, over six, under two, over four, under two, over four, under two, over six, under two, over four, under two, over four, under two, over six, under two, and then over six. So you can see that once you get a hang of what the pattern is telling you, it's really quite simple. And it's just about working on one row at a time so that you don't get, you know, overwhelmed by seeing the whole thing. And again, we're just making sure that that's nice and arched. And we're really, we really need to pay attention to our rows that they're looking fairly even. So by that, I mean not some rows you're not squishing down further, that'll start to become noticeable. So I'm really making sure that those rows are just sitting nicely on top of each other without being really squished. Sometimes it can be hard to describe the tension in, you know, through a screen, but um, we do our best and hopefully just by really seeing this and practicing yourself, you can kind of get the hang of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another row of plain weave. Now we're ready to start on the fourth row. And then after the fourth row, I'm gonna go ahead and keep weaving, but it's the same concept all the way up. So let's do this fourth row together. So we're starting on the under. So we're going under two, over two, under six, over two, under six, over two, under two, over two, under six, over two, under six, over two, under two, over two, under six, over one, under six, over two, under two. So now I'm going to do, once again, the plain weave, and then like I said, I'm gonna just keep on weaving so that we can see this come together. I'm quickly gonna show you how to end and start a new piece of the warp string. So I'm just going to, I came out on the underneath of this warp string. I'm gonna just wrap it around an extra time. This is just gonna make it easier to tuck in in the back later. And then I'm just simply gonna take another piece and start it on the over and go all the way across in my next row. All right, you guys. So what we're gonna do here, I got a little ahead of myself. Um, since we're ending on an under, I'm gonna switch that up so that it's easier to tuck in the yarn and it's gonna look a little nicer at the end. So I'm just gonna take this chunky yarn, I'm going back up through these two warp strings and I'm just gonna let that hang out on top instead. Cause again, it's just gonna be easier to tuck in later. 
So what we can do now is we're gonna trim off the excess. So I'm leaving myself a nice long tail to tuck in later. And then I've gone in with the warp string again for that plain weave. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do two more rows of plain weave with that warp string and then we're gonna put some uh, merino wool roving in the middle. Now one thing that I'm gonna do, and it might just be how I'm sitting, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and see where this is all sitting and if it looks the same. I'm feeling a little bit like this side was sitting a little bit higher and we wanna make sure everything is really nice and parallel. So I'm even gonna measure up from the top and we're pretty good there. It's just a little bit off. All right, I'm gonna keep going with that plain weave. So I am beating this little section down pretty firmly. And then what I'm gonna do is cut off this excess, leave a tail, and I'm gonna do that same thing I did down here where I loop it back around that warp string for ease of tucking in later. Then I'm going to take this and it, this is the color antique and I'm taking a half thickness and what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use one of my um, tapestry needles here to help us out a little bit, but we're gonna weave this in over four, under four, over four, under four. And we're going to be weaving in our merino wool roving and we're just basically using our tapestry needles as a shed stick in this case. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm going to tuck this in. Okay, and so we're at the end here and we have six strings at the end. So at the very end, I'm gonna go under five and over five, just to kind of even it out there. Then we're just gonna basically pull up little loops. I love this technique with merino wool roving. It just gives us some nice texture. And we're basically just using this as a way to like kind of break up the weaving and add some interest to it. And that's looking good to me there. So we're gonna go back in with our warp string. And now I, I should say, this ended up a little bit longer than I was expecting. So if I measure that, it's like basically another four inches. So I'm gonna be weaving very close to the top, which is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. So just keep that in mind if you do this project. It probably would have been better if I went with a slightly narrower um, piece of cardstock at the bottom, but I'm gonna make it work. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the warp string, do three rows of plain weave, and then start the pattern again. Now that I have three more rows of the plain weave in with the warp string, I'm gonna go ahead and just do that whole pattern again up here. Now, I'm gonna get pretty close to the top here, so just be mindful of that when you're planning out your own piece. Now that I've done the pattern, I did one row of plain weave and now I'm going to do a twining stitch to finish this off. Now before I do that twining stitch, I am going to cut this off and start this new piece and go in that same direction. What happens if you were to just turn around and not have two separate pieces when you're doing your twining is that it's gonna pull this side in and we don't, we don't want that. So I've switched to a smaller needle now since I'm weaving so close to the top of my loom. It's just getting really tight in there for the bigger tapestry needle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do that over two, under two, and then I'm grabbing another piece of the warp string and I'm gonna do that twining stitch. Okay, so we're finished with the weaving portion of this and now we need to go ahead and tuck in all the ends. 
The first thing I'm doing is just bringing all the ends to the back so I don't miss any. I think we've got them all here. Now I'm grabbing just a little plastic yarn needle and I'm gonna tuck in all the ends. So with these two, for instance, I cut them a little bit shorter. I'm gonna thread them into my needle and then I'm just gonna go through the pink weft strings and I'm gonna make sure when I flip this over, they're not showing through to the front and they're not, so that's good. And then you can go ahead and trim off the excess. And we're gonna do that same thing for all the ends except for the merino wool robing. So again, I'm gonna trim these off a little bit shorter. And then I'm just gonna poke them through again, those pink weft strings in the back. Trim off the excess. You don't have to go super short. You wanna be really careful not to um, nick any of your warp strings when you do this. And then with this one, I'm gonna go down here to this one. I'm kinda of going in the same channel I just did with the, the warp strings. So I'm going through here and just grabbing three to four little loops, making sure I'm not pulling that tight. Trim off the excess. So you can go ahead and do that same thing with all of the ends and then we'll do the merino wool roving. Okay, so now we're ready to tuck in the merino wool roving. What I'm going to do is grab even just one warp string at a time. So I'm grabbing one near the end here and I'm gonna tuck that merino wool roving back in. I'm gonna grab one more from this section, tuck that in. Now what I'm gonna do before we go cutting, I'm gonna flip this over. And as you can see, we have the loops here out in the middle, but it wasn't really showing up in the front. So I'm just gonna try to like make a bit of a loop with this one too, make sure that this one is even. And that looks pretty good to me there. So now that I have that in place, I can trim off the excess. I like to leave it like a little bit long so it doesn't come loose again. And like that's, this is really no issue at all. So I'm gonna do <laughs> the same thing on this side. So grab one warp string, tuck in the roving, grab another one, tuck it in, we'll flip it over and make sure we like how this is looking in the front. And that looks pretty good to me there. So now we can go ahead and trim off that excess as well. Now we're ready to take the weaving off of the loom. So what I'm gonna do here, there's a couple ways you can do this. If you have a loom, our flat pack frame loom, you'll be able to actually undo the screws in order to take it off. I'm gonna not do that. So if you have a different kind of loom, hopefully that will be helpful. Okay, so before I do this, I'm gonna make sure again that the top is even. And once again, it was looking a little bit like this side was a little bit lower. So I'm just kind of checking that out, making sure it looks pretty straight. Then I'm gonna take out the cardstock. And you can set that aside. And now on this end where we have much longer strings, I'm going to basically just pull them towards the notches and slip them off of my loom. This is where, especially with an overshot, and if you're having to weave as close to the top of your loom like I just was, you wanna make sure that your warp isn't super tight. And anytime you're doing a lot of plain weave, you also just don't need to have your warp super, super tight. That'll give it a little bit more give. All right, so that side is off. The other side will just slip right out. So this is gonna be the top of our weaving, and this is the bottom. So I just grabbed some smaller scissors and what I'm gonna do now is cut open all the loops at the bottom. Because we're gonna just let the bottom warp strings be the fringe. This is something you may have seen in another one of our videos um, that I recently did. I did a weave with me inspired by, and the weaving was inspired by a light fixture and I just kind of let the warp strings be the fringe. And I'm kind of, especially when you're doing a double warp, 
I'm kind of liking this idea, especially if you're wanting just a smaller piece anyway. Um, I think it looks really great. The only tricky part is these last two strings. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take these knots out. If you tie them too tight, you could always just trim them a little shorter and or trim the whole thing a bit shorter if you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to get these knots out and trim them the same length. So normally what I like to do when I'm hanging a piece directly from the loops is I would take the loop, flip it over, twist it around, and then it would have this nice little, we'll just put it on a needle here, nice little attachment like that. These loops are definitely too short unless I was using a super narrow dowel, which I don't wanna do. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take three loops at a time. This will leave us with a group of four at the end, which is totally fine. We're gonna open the same way and then I'm gonna twist them and twist them again and slip them over. So we can do that all the way across. So here's what that looks like. And I really like this look. It's a similar kind of vibe as the other way I was telling you about, but when you're kind of in a pinch and don't have enough length, this is a great um, alternative to that. So the last thing we need to do is add a hanging string. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my warp string for that. So I'm just kind of playing around with these little loops and making sure they're sitting evenly. It's kind of one of those things where you could probably play with it for quite a while and never feel like it's quite done. So for my hanging string, what I like to do is loop around three times. So I like to bring it around once, then on the other side of this string, and then back. And then I just tie a double or sometimes even triple knot. I'm just gonna do a double knot today because that'll be plenty for a small weaving. Trying to keep it nice and tight there. And then I just cut off the excess and then I choose a length. So let's get the, I like to have the knot on the very top of the dowel. It just always looks a little bit better. And it kind of mimics the groupings here. This is a little bit bulkier, but I'm fine with that. So then I'm gonna just kind of look to see what feels like a good length. Now, I always like to go somewhere in between, like not super short or it's gonna pull these in, but not super long like this, where it looks just unproportional and like it's almost adding to the piece as a whole. So I'm just gonna go somewhere in the middle and I'm liking that length. Let's see what it's like. So it's about a little over half. And then what I'm gonna do is just measure out the string that I need. Leave myself a nice long tail. And I'm gonna tie this the same way as before. So I've wrapped it around. Then I'm gonna bring this end on the other side of this. And then back up. to make sure it's nice and tight again. And then I'm gonna tie this off just like the other side. All right, you guys, so here is our finished heart overshot woven wall hanging. Um, I'm loving this piece. I'm really excited about the dark warp string. I think it was something a little bit different and hopefully gives you some ideas for some color combinations you could try out as well. Make sure if you make this piece or use our patterns and tutorials, you tag us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, wherever it is you post and tag us at Spruce and Linen. We love to see and share your work. You can also use hashtag SL Weaving Club on Instagram. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.